What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fowler, the man, Eric Sheets. Haber, we are covering our first giant slate of the NBA season. Uh, had a good opening night with just a couple games. This is going to be a tough one. We got we got a, about five million. Re- what look like about you know five million reasonably good plays everywhere. So we're going to have to try and figure it out together. Um, and we'll be live tonight at six Eastern. Yep. And Sheets will be with me. Sounds like. Um, but yeah, it's it's it, this is the name of the game today is going to be trying to figure out what works where and there's just so many good plays so many guys feel underpriced and at the same time there's some really popular well potentially really popular value that that is is it's it's not that the value is so suspect it's just that it it feels i don't know the early ownership projections have it a little bit a little bit higher than i would have thought for the entire basically the, the all of the spurs many of the uh of the of the memphis grizzlies it's you've got to you're gonna have to make a choice choices there. Not all these guys are gonna get there, so we're gonna have to try and figure it out together. It's gonna to be a big, it's a it's a big slate. It's gonna be a crazy night. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Sheets, uh, let me know when you're ready, and we can go game by game. Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Uh, Overall, I, I would say that um, uh, it's it seems like way too big of a slate to have anybody be a really great play at high ownership uh, today. Um, that's, that's my instinct. I mean, like, I haven't, didn't deep dive as much into these spurs and like all this other stuff, but you know, my early ownership projections are pretty, are pretty, uh, I don't want to say even, but they, cause they do have some like 30% guys. So I guess that's not particularly pretty huge for, a- yeah, I guess it, it feels okay. as though that's not what you're supposed to do on a big slate on day one of the NBA, you know? when you really don't know what the, what the minutes and, and, and usage is going to be. I mean, for, for listen, the, the minutes are tough to predict anyway, but it's all also very possible that over this course of the, you know, off season coaches have, have refined their scheme are changing stuff that they run where, where maybe one guy would be an XX usage player. Maybe in this particular scheme, he's not a, as, as, as high of a usage player and vice versa. So you really, so the variance is, 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 not just, oh, how is a guy going to show up with this team? But, I mean, how is the team itself going to be constructed this year, even from a scheme uh, scheme perspective? So it's a, it's a lot going on. So the way I look at that is I'm inclined to kind of fade most of most of the huge chalk on, in, in, you know, for at least the, at least the first part of the, of the week, if not the whole, the whole season. I don't know. The problem is that guys are literally priced, though, when you have, like, nobody above 5,000 on a team – it's just impossible not to not to play somebody from that team instinctually. Right. So I I kind of get why why it's why it's it's flocking that way. Anyway, we'll see. We'll 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 get into it. We've got good games every which way. You got your screen up now. Let's start off with the first one, the Washington Indiana. Um, I, my notes for this one are pretty light. I I'm I'm not I'm not married to any of this. I feel like Porzingis on Fanduel maybe. Um, it's a it's it's just a more of a positional thing. But the 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 only thing I'm really heavily going to be heavily interested in this game is I think Halliburton is still is is just way too cheap, um, and then I'm open to Jalen Smith and Chris Duarte. Um, I don't and 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 Miles Turner for that matter. But I I don't feel the need to play any of them. The one guy I will say that I do really like is I am going to be very high on the Halliburton play at four seventy two hundred. On who you 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 lost, I lost you? Uh, uh, Halliburton. Okay. Um, I think he's a really, really strong play. And I think this is, this is a game you could, you could target and you could, you could take some shots at the other side, whether it's Kuzma, KP, probably not going to spend 9,600 for Beal, but on, on FanDuel, they're all pretty reasonable. So I wouldn't mind getting exposure to this game. It should be a good game environment. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with the Jalen Smith thing. Um, but, but I, I, I feel, I just feel like Halliburton's the one guy who really stands out as being an exceptional play here. What's your, uh, what's your hesitation with Jalen Smith? He's 4,400. There's a million guys who are 40 some odd hundred. Uh, I don't know what role they're going to play for him. We have no idea whether he'll be starting. Uh, Isaiah Jackson got more minutes, uh, got, got minutes down the stretch last year. Miles Turner's back. And even when Miles Turner wasn't back, Jalen Smith didn't pay, always pay off this price tag. So that's my hesitation. But I do think that he's fine. I just think that he's showing up as a probably a better point per dollar play and a more and I don't think his median score here is quite, you know, what do we have it at third 28? I feel like it should be a little lower than that, but it's, he's, he's definitely reasonable. So I have, uh, I have him rated as, you know, the top, as you mentioned, like kind of point per dollar play 
you know, on, on, in this game. And, you know, he waits to be for me just below these, uh, these San Antonio guys. Um, uh, other guys that show up, uh, you mentioned already Chris Duarte a little bit uh, as, as a decent play. And the next guy I have on the Indiana side, you're going down to, um, you know, to, again, points per dollar is going to be Tyrese Halliburton, but because of his just like raw points upside, he does rate to be, the, I guess, the best overall play, I suppose, um, on the Indiana. There's an outside yeah. chance he might be the best play on the slate at his price. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> like one um, So there's that. And then you're at Miles Turner's country or whatever it is. But I, I have no problem with, with guys like that at, at low ownership. But as, you, as, you'll, as you'll hear throughout the course of the season, I mean, the center position is – now you taught me this the first day I started playing DFS was the center position is always broken. You know, I like the, uh, they, they, they're always underpriced given the way, given the way results distribute and the way, way points are allocated. And so when, when don't, don't get too excited when you see a center that like looks good because there's usually a lot of guys. That look good. Um, so that's the Indiana side on Washington. I'm not really seeing all that much um so i would have to think that on a on a big slate like this i'd probably not get too much of the washington if in any so uh, i guess to summarize uh tyrese halliburton i have is a uh, you know very very strong play across the board and then the point per dollar stuff uh, uh jalen uh, jalen smith and then duarte yeah um, I don't think there's, I have no problem if you want to, I, I, the more I think about it, I actually think that there's, you can make an ar- a better argument for Porzingis than I made. Um, put up some really big games last year that just, just has that 60 point upside. Uh, so just, just to run him out there, but definitely not a priority at first. Not only that, but I mean, he was, he's like perennially, perennially hurt, you know? Yeah. And, and maybe, I don't know, is he maybe if he's, if he's a full go and full healthy, you know, playing full minutes with no restrict, you know what I mean? He's, he's, he can, he can do it. <laughs> uh, uh, he can do it. I wish that he was, uh, I could get him a power forward, but um, I can't. <laughs> yeah. 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 I hear you. But the one thing about him is I, I just, I'm never going to assume he's ever going to play more than 32 minutes. Cause I don't think he's done it like outside of a weird overtime game, like in the last four years. So I just can't go into ever assuming that he's going to be playing like unleashed, especially on opening night. I don't, I don't think they would do that on the road, but you never know. Uh, we have certainly seen some, 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 some things um this this orlando detroit game speaking of guys who i really like in that same tier i think Cade cunningham is a tremendous play i think he's actually probably too cheap he's gonna have a monster monster season i think he and halliburton should both project to be in the 40s and that's just a a a good price for 7k when they both have 60 fantasy point upside so Really, my only level of interest in this in this game as of right now is Cade. If you want to talk Wendell Carter, fine. Sadiq Bay, fine. Franz Wagner, fine. Um, Cole Anthony, fine. Just not excited about any of them, really. Uh, just may, maybe more because of the nature of the slate, I'm trying to make it smaller. But I do feel like Cade is an exceptional value at uh, 7K. Yeah, my initial look is is very similar to yours, if not exactly the same. I mean, I, I don't get too much anybody – on the Detroit side. Um, uh, now you guys know that right now we're talking about it from a, um, from a, uh, a DraftKings perspective. Just want to make sure before we, we, we leave this situation that somebody like Sadiq Bay is not. Um, he's 5,200. He's much more reasonable on FanDuel, but he, he is. Yeah. He takes yeah. away. I mean, he's a three point shooter, which takes away a lot of his strengths and he doesn't get steals and blocks. So just keep that in mind. A lot of the guys who are going to look cheaper on FanDuel, just be careful with it because the reason they look cheaper and better, like better plays is because they don't get steals and blocks and they rely on their three point shooting. So they're not getting the same, the same real upside that some of these other guys are um, on FanDuel. Just wanted, just wanted to remind everybody of that. Cause there was, it was constantly the thing last year. Oh, Steph Curry's too cheap over here. Well, you got to get steals and blocks to really be that efficient on uh, effective on, on, on FanDuel in general. Um, by the way, the Steph Curry play certainly worked out last night. I ended up getting to much more of that as we sort of talked. Well, we about have one, one, one day and one, one, one coach is a liar, liar, pants on fire. You know what I mean? Like, so it's one yep. for one. Yep, exactly. And it was the, it was a ring night. And, and, you know, that, that's what I kept thinking. Like they, they're not, I, I wrote it in our discord right before I said that right before lock, I just thought that they're not going to hold him back if he gets it going. And, but, and it's weird because he didn't really get it going exactly. 
But when they were pulling away, they weren't going to bring him out at that moment. And then they did bring him back on, on, on the court late. And they, but what they did do is they did they did hold Clay down to, to no minutes, basically. Um, I thought Clay was one of the worst plays on the slate yesterday, and I was surprised how many people played him. When the coach announces 16 to 18 minutes, he shouldn't be played that much. And at the same time, I don't care what Westbrook, uh, the results were even. Actually, they were fine for his price. They were very solid. Um, but Westbrook, uh, Westbrook nearly had a monster game last night and, and was 3% on basically everywhere. So, uh, I was very happy with, with, with the decisions to, to, that I went with anyway. He had a very, uh, very, uh, curious, uh, curious comment, uh, in, in the post game. What did he um, say? He was saying, I don't know how you could expect me to come off the bench. Uh, I don't even, uh, I don't wouldn't even know how to warm up coming off the bench or something like that. It was really, yeah. uh, it's kind of bizarre. But he's he's a he's a weird dude. He's a great guy. Come on, come on. He's he's one of my favorite guys. Um, I actually I actually don't blame. I I I don't think they, that Westbrook had anything to do with any of their problems last night. Not being able to hit what were they oh for their first one one for their first nineteen in the threes or something like that. It was ridiculous, and it was certainly not Westbrook's fault. He was actually played. I thought he played better than anybody on the team except for maybe Anthony Davis. Anyway. We can move on to uh, Chicago, Miami, because we know that I'll talk about Westbrook all day, um, anytime he does anything good. <laughs> um, so with no, with just announced this morning that Zach Levine is out. I don't really think it does anything for me. Um, I think you could sure you could argue for Vucevic. I wouldn't play Demar Derozan at eighty eight hundred. Um, I don't like this matchup for Chicago. I think the only thing I really want in this game is Bam, and I think that Bam is a, is a really good play. Um, Sixty four hundred is too cheap. I like the matchup, and he's the one who uh, who sort of stands out to me today. He's he's pretty much what I got from this game. How about you? Yeah, I didn't have um, Zach Levine being out, so the early projections are are are, are off. Uh, I imagine that somebody should become a good play, right? I mean, like he's got a lot of usage, and so it has to go somewhere. Yeah, on the other hand, I mean, maybe like, Stone Moo. I, I, I mean, yeah, I don't know. That's the thing. I'm not going to play him at 5,200. Uh, Kobe White won't start. I'm not going to play him at 4,700. Um, it really should benefit DeRozan and, and Vooch, but terrible matchup for those guys. So that's what you got to sort of factor in, I think. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is that, is that, you know, uh, Miami is always a tough, uh, tough team to score on in general. Um, yeah, and I, I agree. I think that. Bam is, you know, one of the, you know, I got three or so equally, not equally priced. I shouldn't say that. I have three or four. I mean, I, I got some good centers here, you know, and he's one of them. Uh, I don't, I don't think he's particularly better than some of the others though. So if he's 25% owned or something like that, I mean, I could, I could, I could find other options in that, at that position, but he certainly looks to be, by a very slim margin, the best of this of the you know middle range center plays. Mm -hmm. um, it's like so funny. I, I totally forgot how the NBA works. I'm looking at like my top ten values, like nine under centers. I mean, that's what what that's basically what uh, how it goes. No. So yeah, I think it's Bam or or um, or not much in this game. Yep. Um, yeah. I don't don't love the the game for for DFS. Um, all right, cheats. Your Knicks. Um, I have Cleveland, Toronto next. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going. So I'm going through the the this the, the, the what's it called thing because I have my notes all through Saber Sim, so I never been looking at the page. Um, okay, Cleveland, Toronto. Go ahead. This could, this could be quick. I mean, yeah. This. I, um. Yeah. Go ahead, Chiefs. Yeah, the only guy I really have coming out of this uh, this whole game is um is Pascal Siakam, and he's just another you know another center that is going to look okay. You know, that's, that's pretty much all I'm getting from this game. Uh, I love Scotty Barnes here at 6,100. Oh, okay. Uh, fits the middling build. Scotty Barnes is going to have an, an absolutely massive season. Um, don't be surprised if by the end of the year, he's, he's maybe, maybe it's one year too soon, but he'll, he should be scoring more fantasy points than anybody on this team, I think. So uh, keep an eye out for that going forward. I have no problem with Siakam. I also don't have like a need to like, the price is a little low. Um, I think you might be better off playing Van Fleet just given the matchup because it's, this is a tough matchup for Siakam. I mean, going up against between Mobley and and uh, Jared Allen is not going to be a picnic. Um, so that's 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 pretty much all I have. There. I, I do think Mobley is in play on the other side. I think Darius Garland's in play, but I don't I don't feel in love with 
with the Garland thing. I think Mobley is is probably my favorite one there. You got the battle of the uh, two of the three best rookies from last year. So um, I'm very, I, I have a little bit of interest in Mobley, but I don't have him as a priority as of right now. What do you got with for me for uh, what do you get the next one as? Well, uh, I do have Cle uh, New York and, and Memphis as the next one. Yeah, start it off. Um, the guys I'm getting out of this game are not what I would have expected. Um, I'm not really getting to, to Ja. Um, I, I think that we have to get used to the idea. I mean, you were used to it before I was that you just sort of almost have to play him whenever he's on the court, um, regardless of price. I mean, he has like a such an enormous ceiling and sometimes he's 1% owned. Sometimes he's 30, you know, it's depending on, on how the rest of the slate lays out. So I would never X him out. He's not going to project well at this price in this matchup. He just isn't. Um, the interesting thing is that Dylan Brooks is out um, or doubtful, which is code for out. So these other guys are probably going to pick up the pace in, 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 in as could Ja for that matter. But I, I'm looking at guys you need to sort out here. I'm looking, you know, uh, John Concher and De – well, Desmond Bain is a little better. I mean, obviously, he's 6,100. Then I have this guy, Jake LaRavia, who maybe you could talk he's, to me about. Like, these are, these, are, these, are just guys that are, these are guys that are showing up for me. He was and the 19th pick in this year's draft. Uh, what's that? LaRavia was the 19th overall pick in this year's draft, FYI. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm not uh, – I'm getting any Knicks tonight. Um, so it'll be like uh, maybe a couple of days before I start playing uh, Knicks and DFS. So for me, I guess, I mean, are these guys, even if they are good, are they going to be better than the Spurs at those prices? Probably not, you know? So I don't know. Maybe this game is a pass. It's it's tough for me because, I mean, it's not it's not just that that, 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 that Dylan Brooks is out. It's that there's no Jaron Jackson this season. So kind of opens up the whole front court. And we have no idea who they're starting. So I, I'm going to hope we get a starting lineup before lock. Um, I think Santi Aldama, they seem fa fairly high on him. They're probably going to give Laravia some minutes. They they tend to play their rookies a little bit. Um, I'm very up in the air with what to do with Memphis as of this morning. Maybe I'll have a, a little bit more figured out later on, but I would really like to know who they're planning on starting before, before we figure it out. Because I do think Aldama would probably be my preferred guy of the, of the group and Laravia might be my favorite of the long shots, but I, I agree that may, maybe, maybe it's not better than, than the Spurs and maybe we don't need all of the value. Um, if Laravia is starting, it's going to be hard to ignore him at three K. I just think it's a good long, large field tournament play to, to play Julius Randall here. I, I, I don't I, I don't know why everyone is so down on him for his production this year. Like even as he had a struggle, like he struggled in real life last year, he still put up like, you know, he was still a really good fantasy producer. And I expect him to have a little bit of a bounce back here. Uh, so I, I I don't have a problem with Randall, but uh, it's mostly, a, you know, you're going to get like zero percent ownership on a guy who can, you know, 50 at 7,900, there's other guys out there who can do it. It'll probably a little better plays, but they're also going to be a lot more popular. So I'm open to the Randall idea and, and uh, that's, that's where I'm at. And I'm, and I'm going to have to figure Memphis out later as we, as we figure it, as we go on, because that's, it's just a tough situation without knowing who's starting. Um, so I, have, I have Houston Atlanta next. Okay. Um, you know, this is the beginning of the, uh, of the DeJounte Murray, Trey Young together experiment. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting from a, from a basketball perspective and it's, and it's certainly interesting from a, uh, from a DFS perspective. Um, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. Um, I don't have either of them projected particularly well, uh, today. I'm probably going to end up having to wait and see to see what, uh, see what they do over there with that. I, of, of the two, I happen to have, I mean, Trey Young a little better, but I mean, I don't know at ninety five hundred. I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. Um, on the Houston side, I mean, they got. I mean, I don't know if they have any players, but they they got rid of uh, what's his name Christian Wood, and they did pick up uh, uh, what the number three pick Jabari Smith. Um, so I presume they have going to no reason to not play him. So uh, there's him, and then there's the guys that we're used to getting annoyed with, with like uh, Kevin Porter Jr. Um, and then. Um, 
Jalen Green is showing up as the as the as the value as well. So for me, it's Jalen Green, um, Kevin Porter, and I want to get your opinion on that rookie for Houston. And also with Christian Wood now out for whenever it's it's, it's I guess it's Sengun season for like the, the time being. So um, I guess he's going to look good also. Yeah, I like I I have Green. I I don't think Jabari Smith is playable. Um, not even. Oh, okay. I don't think he's even like. I don't think there's um there's any world I could play him at 6,600 on this slate. He's not okay. even, he, he's, um you know, he's, uh, he's a good defender. Who's, who's, you know, who's got a nice release and he's going to, he's going to have some big games and be a really good player for years, but I don't really know where the upside comes from at 6,600. I think Kevin Porter okay. right near uh, Jalen green or Sangoon. I don't know that I want to stack all those guys together. I think that my favorite, like logically would be green, but I kind of like that the ownership will be low on Sh- and Sangoon. So I, I, I'm I'm going to make a note here to probably have one of those three guys in a pretty good portion of my lineups, actually, because I think I think you're getting 40 out of one of them. Um, it's hard for me to know which one. Jalen Green seems the most logical. Uh, Kevin Porter Jr. also, I think, is pretty logical. And, and I think Shangun is going to have a really big season. He's an excellent fantasy point fantasy producer. Um, not the ideal matchup exactly, but we've seen big games against Atlanta before just because of the pace. Um, no interest in anything for from Atlanta for me at all. Um, if you want to take a shot in anything, I guess it would be John Collins. That's pretty much all I would. What do What do you think of the 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 you know the Hawks in general? That that idea of having Murray and, and Young on the court together, or are they going to be staggering them, or what? What do you think they're going to do with them? No, they're going to play them together. I mean, that's they couldn't give up what they gave up to to not make that a priority to keep them together on the court. Um, I think you're going to see. Uh, guys like uh, they also just paid DeAndre Hunter a ton of money yesterday. Um, yeah, I, I think I think that they're I think that they're a good, really good deep team that that has ten guys. And um, when Bogdanovich is back, I, I think that that makes for gives them a lot of flexibility in the way they want to play run their offense. Um, I think that as the season goes on, maybe you'll see more John Collins, less Capella, and more Kongwu um in the front court but i i don't have it i don't think it really moves the needle for me too much on the hawks i don't i don't see them as a realistic contender in any way i think they had a very fluky run to the conference finals a few years ago when everybody was hurt and i don't i don't see them as a real contender of any kind um but i think they're they're, they're a playoff team um this next game man uh, these might be the, the, this is the Wembenyama sweepstakes game, right? Or wait, let me see which one we got. Which one do you have now? Oh, you have, you have New Orleans. Never mind. Um, we'll get to the we'll get to the, the other sweepstakes game uh, in a minute. Um, all these games at the same time. Where is the? How did I miss the New Orleans? Oh, I skipped over it. Um, it's another seven thirty game. So I don't know what to do, uh, which means I'm probably not going to do much. I will have a tiny bit of CJ McCollum exposure. Um, just because of the price and the upside, but I, even that doesn't feel all that great to me. Um, I think there's probably better value out there than Herb Jones, but I think there's probably worse too. <laughs> um, the best play in this game, believe it or not, that I've got by a pretty good ways is Ben Simmons. <laughs> um, it feels weird to say out loud. So it should be a good pace game. You can do all the sort of other things. And um He's the he's the player I like most in this game, and it's like everybody I like is exactly seven K. I feel like, but um, yeah, he's my he's my favorite play in this game, and it should be a good game. So I, I have no problem if you wanted to get more exposure, or if you wanted to get you know get some. I actually don't even think that ninety one hundred is that crazy for Zion, but I don't think they're gonna let him go nuts either. Um, so I, I, that's that's mostly where I'm at on this game. It's just gonna be maybe McCollum, and I do kind of like Ben Simmons at seven K. Yeah, I'm kind of interested in in not playing this game um yeah it would be nice if, if ben simmons were a good play you know what i mean it would be what i'm saying is it would be nice for brooklyn in general if ben simmons was a good play you know uh uh well so this is really the curious case of ben simmons right like mm-hmm. you could could have made the argument really recently that he was like the best overall player in basketball i mean not really but like not quite. yeah, yeah. all these different skill sets or whatever and then he just has just no the fact that he literally has not a shred of ability to take a shot, mm-hmm. it's like almost, it's almost, it's weird. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I mean, how do you, how do you, how are you 25 years, however old he is, 28 years old and play basketball player and not know how to shoot a basketball? 
I mean, you know, led the nation in scoring in college. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's the whole thing is is, is bizarre. Um, yeah. Nonetheless, um, I, I will just throw in what I have now. I'm not, not going to end up playing it, but I have a, I have a six x center three k. Dayron Sharp is showing up. I mean, I just can't imagine a world where I get to him. But just uh, just for disclosure, <laughs> that's what I have. Um, and I'm probably not going to, but I'm probably probably not going to play anything this game. Yeah, I, I mean. Yeah, I don't think I can do it, but um, I, 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 I do think that, that, that it's a good pace game for Simmons, but I don't know what they're going to do with – I mean, they're going to play in minutes. I, I, I'll, that's the one I might revisit, it, and I don't know if I'll make him a priority, but I could certainly see by the end of the day me starting to talk myself into Ben Simmons, which just feels wrong in so many ways. <laughs> um, okay, see Minnesota. Uh, so with Shea will play tonight. We got the, the word on that yesterday, which is good to know. Who's that? Shea, Shea Gildas Alexander. Oh, I thought you said Jay, like Jalen Williams. Okay. No, no, no. The, otherwise, we would have had to deal with, which we're going to have to deal with all season because this is another, definitely another Wembenyama sweepstakes team. Um, as of right now, I don't have anybody from OKC, which it feels, I feel good to not have anybody. And I don't have anybody from Minnesota either. So I'm, I'm basically off of this game, uh, which should, there should be people. A lot of fantasy points to go around, just no one that I particularly like. Jalen Williams is maybe the one guy who, you know, I don't know where what the, where they stand with him and what they're going to do with him, but are they going to start him? Um, I don't see that happening exactly. Oh, my God, the Bulls just re- have already released their lineup. Thank you to the Bulls, by the way. They no, 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 they released it yesterday. Well, well they, they, they couldn't have. <laughs> they announced, oh, you know what's funny? They announced, this is they, they, had, they released their lineup, but then they scratched Zach Levine already. <laughs> oh, okay, there it is. Because I saw last night when I was looking through the slate, I'm like, oh my god, these guys have check marks already. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy, huh? Um, so that so I don't know why they released it, just unrelease it. I wonder if uh, if Levine has the uh, the old Miami flu. Um, yeah, right. Day one, that would be a really really bad look, but right. Um, anyway, anyway, back to that, back to the to the OKC. I, I don't I don't know if I I can do the Jalen. I, I I'm. <sighs> It, it's I don't know it feels pretty thin the Jalen Williams thing but they will play a minute I, I'm sort of I'm sort of off of this game well I'll say this there are two guys on Oklahoma City who can who can put up fantasy points um I don't know if I'm gonna play them today but but Jay Gilgis Alexander can can put up fantasy points and Josh Giddy can put up fantasy points um I, I don't know exactly how I can get to either of them today. I'm kind of looking through, at least from projections, they're not, they're just not showing up, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I'm still, I'm still thinking about your looks and it's obviously a different team or whatever, but your idea for like always kind of playing teams against Minnesota, just kind of all pace up type stuff. And you get, you get a Shea made a lot of improvements last year. I mean, he, he, he got a step back three in his arsenal. That was really, that was really humming. And listen, I don't know what's going to end up with his career or whatever, but but the fact is is that at least the bright light the bright side of him being on like the worst team in the history of basketball is he gets to to do what he wants when he's on the court you know um, and uh, I think it's going to be a season just like that I think he's going to put up a lot of fantasy points um, and um, you know I don't know uh, right now he's not showing up for me but he's almost he's listen he's not like John Morant but he's a guy that I wouldn't mind having some of almost every time they play you know? so anyway. Yeah, Josh- I will throw out that that I do think Josh Giddy takes a ton of that away from him. Um, Fair enough. I actually think Josh Giddy might be the, the I think he's their number one and, and Shea is their number two, actually. But I don't think they want to win. So I think that's partly why they want Giddy to be the one because Shea's a little more experienced and all that stuff. They want Giddy to sort of feel him feel his way through and make his mistakes. But but that's my only argument sort of against Shea is that I, I and and Giddy, by the way, like talk about having a ceiling. He's got he does everything. Yep. Uh, I, I just I don't think this game stays particularly close. And I think Minnesota, we sort of have to remember that they're much better defensively now than they've been. Okay. They will still put they will still play up tempo though. So well, that's right. They have Gobert now, right? Yeah. And 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 they they should, I mean, they should smash OKC tonight. But you know, it's NBA, things happen. So they're they're playing these two together, huh? Gobert and, and Kat? Yeah, they're gonna do it. Mm-hmm. And I think it's gonna work during the regular season. Um who's Kat gonna guard? He's gonna play the power forwards mostly. We're gonna start targeting like 
<laughs> high scoring power forwards against them <laughs> guys who especially like anybody who's athletic on the on the around the rim or something yeah absolutely um but actually you're gonna have the rim will be covered a little bit more from gobert so actually it's, it's kind of interesting but you're right that we always want to try to attack cat um from word in the off season is that, that he's, he looks better defensively than and more more uh more flexible but it is it is going to be weird man it's going to be an interesting sight to see um yeah i think i don't i don't it's weird and, and i'm not saying i don't like anybody from these games i, I will name at the end of this I, there's so many guys on my list but i'm trying to just make this a little bit smaller of a slate and try to really hone in on the on on this the, the few guys who i really really like and mostly they're going to be in the six and seven k ranges because i think the middling build is the way to go i just think that even with the ceilings of some of the top guys um it's it's just you can get nearly the same score from guys who are in the seven k's that on today i think um that's where i'm at um all right cheat so you're you're on utah and uh, denver here right no nope, nope charlotte san antonio oh boy i'm all over the map i keep skipping games and then forgetting to go back okay um well, somebody's going to have to score first for Charlotte. Um, for Charlotte or San Antonio? Well, both. But both. Then starting with, I always start with, I mean, they always start with the road team. Um, or I always start with the road team. So uh, I, I probably am just off of it for Charlotte. I, I tried to look at it. I tried to think of what could happen and and, and come up well, with wait, Well, wait a minute. I mean, like, what's wrong with the guys they have? I mean, so I, I look, I, I, when you say somebody's got a score, I mean, they got – they have Terry Rozier, right? They have Gordon Hayward. They have, you know, a guy who used to play a lot, PJ Washington. It's not like they have nobody, right? Um, Lamelo is Lamelo is out. Are we not just supposed? To, again, I'm just like talking because I mean they're yeah. not showing up too much, but but are we just not supposed to play these guys? I mean, I, I have I have Gordon Hayward is looking like a pretty good play. I have Terry Rozier looking like a pretty good play. I, I kind of, especially if you're gonna play all these San Antonio like 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 uh, like guys. I mean, why not why not stack the game a little bit? So I don't know. I, I kind of like both of them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's, I'm just, I, I personally am not interested particularly, but um, it is, it should, I mean, look, they're, they're, these are probably the two worst teams in the NBA. Um, why, what happened to, why are they so bad, Charlotte, all of a sudden? They're terrible. They, even with, first of all, they weren't good last year. They almost, uh, didn't they almost like the playoffs last year? No. They, well, they were 10th out of 15 teams in their, oh. their conference. Yeah. So, and um, they have no Miles Bridges, um, who's probably their, their second most well, definitely their second best player. Well, what happened to him? <laughs> we it's a question you don't want to ask and, and, and hear the answers to. It's a lot of bad allegations. Oh, oh, okay. Um, but but I hear you. I mean, I, I guess it just does something weird. I don't know. You tell okay, so let's just say this is last year and you say and you have the normal starting five, but then like with five minutes, with like a half hour before post time, they said Miles Bridges and LaMelo Ball are out. You know what I mean? Like Rogier and Hayward be 80% off. No, they want to get no, not okay. enough, right. I mean, Hayward is never like a lock for fantasy point production anyway. He's just it, it comes and goes. I don't think they have any interest in Rozier and Hayward being on this team. I think they mm-hmm. want to get rid of everybody and tank as hard as possible. Good grief, okay. I mean, it, 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 it's 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 going to be a tankathon, and and the only the team that's going to really out tank them, which is the team that never used to tank, is San Antonio. San Antonio is really desperately trying to tank. They want this. They want one of those top two picks, especially the number one pick, obviously with Wembenyama. But they are absolutely trying to tank, and they do. They're doing it in a way that at least make, make might be kind of fun because they get to play all these twenty year old kids. Um, I, I think there's a lot of guys here. Obviously, we can talk about, but the ones who stand out the most for me are Vassal or Vassell, however one anybody want, wants to pronounce it. I think he's this the the guy I, I feel the best about getting the minutes. Um, I think that you're going to see Keldon Johnson. I think he's totally reasonable. Um, I think Trey Jones is either the best value on the slate or could end up being the biggest dud on the slate. And if he does, that means that probably Josh, Josh Primo has a game, but he's such a young guy. I don't know how much they're going to play him, but then again, they're trying to go young. So I'm just sort of going back and forth with them on all this value. Cause it does at, at first look, um, look like you want these guys. What I've got in is Vassal or Jones or Keldon Johnson and, and probably wanting one, one of those guys in most of my lineups, but I don't, I don't have the, uh, I don't feel totally confident in the Trey Jones um, just yet. I'd like to see their starting lineup before I, before I made that decision. Unfortunately, we probably won't have that. 
but I, I I do assume it'll be Jones right now. It just feels, it doesn't feel like the surest thing in the world for 4,200. Um, yeah. Anyway. I have Trey Jones uh, at the top, then Vassal. Then I have Jakob Pertl. And then I have, um, and then a little, and then a drop down to the other guy, um, uh, Keldon Johnson. Uh, problem with Podol is again he's uh, you know he's got a lot of competition at that position. Um, so uh, uh, not to mention to Nikola Jokic, which we'll get to. Right? Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I like all the guys that you mentioned. Uh, it's funny I look at the, uh, the the front court here for San Antonio. I didn't realize they had they picked up Isaiah Roby. You know Zach Collins. I mean he's always been someone I've been waiting to get a shot. You know to do something. Um, Maybe this is the year where they let him. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. uh, I don't think I'm gonna play him today, but just kind of just, mm-hmm. just kind of talking through NBA stuff. So I kind I kind of like what I have up on my board here. Just at least something to do to start off with is play. Mm-hmm. Is play the two guys I've heard of from Charlotte that can do something, and 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 play a bunch of San Antonio. I think I think it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think I think it's a lot. I think it's a sound strategy. Certainly, I, I have no problem. I don't I don't have any problem with it. I just. I'm I'm a, I'm having a little bit of a harder time with the Charlotte side, but I, I'm also biased in my head that I have them as as wanting to lose because Ubre, Rozier, and Hayward I think are all reasonable. The one that actually might be the best play is Book Knight, and I don't really know why he's not projecting better. I don't even so, know what that is. He's their first round pick, number ten overall last year, not this what, year. What position? He plays like shooting guard, small forward. Oh, what, Weiss Camp? This guy, Joe. No, 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 no. James Booknight. For San Antonio? Yeah. No, 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 no. For, for Charlotte. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, I remember him. I remember him. I remember him. He, um, yeah, he, he got some run last year. A little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's just, it's going to be weird. I, and and, I, and I, for what it's worth, right now, they're projecting Ubre to start and Booknight to come off the bench. I don't think Ubre starts. Um, Just my, unless they announce something that I may have missed, but. Well, and that's a guy that can, you know, that's a guy I would definitely play in my stacks, the, the book night. I mean, like, yeah. he's a guy at 3K that, can, you know, who knows what yeah. he can do. He can, he can do some stuff. And he, this is a game that sort of suits him because you're playing against all other guys who are 21 years old, too. So, right. Right. you know, so I kind of like that idea a little bit. So I'm going to have to look back at the book night um, a little later because I, I think there's a chance that they end up starting him. And whether they do or don't, I think that there is enough upside for him to maybe take a shot at 3K. Um, I like but, that. If you, yeah, I think that's a that's a one way you can get a little bit a little bit lower ownership on a guy who's got some upside. All right, um, Denver and Utah next, right? Yeah, Utah. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, good luck this year. There's a there's the other. Team. That. Good good luck good, good luck uh, with uh, Kelly Olynyk guarding Jokic. Is that what's going to happen? Oh my I, God. I can't even that's, imagine. It's going to be ugly. Um, I Go cannot ahead. imagine. Uh, so in any case. Uh, Oh, that, but at least they have Donovan Mitchell. Oh, yeah, that's right. They don't have him anymore. <laughs> um, so for me, Nikola Jokic is 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 the best play on the slate. I have him better than than Luca. Um, and you know he's going to be twelve k probably in a week when all these got when everybody in the entire drafting you know it's lobby awesome. gets gets juiced up. You know what I mean? Because yeah, this yeah. is this is like, hey, come play the NBA. It's easy. You know. Like, yeah, oh. yeah, exactly. And then next thing you know, you have like you know. Everybody, then you have a. It's a good example. I don't know. You'll have like Book Night at like seven K or something like that. It's, it's like, um, so I, I like Jokic a lot. I mean, I'm sure he's gonna, you know, he can score. His, he can do whatever he wants in this game, I presume. Um, and I think a ten three is a way too cheap for him. Uh, so I definitely like that. The the other Denver guys that you know you always have to you know keep uh keep thinking about is Michael Porter Jr. fifty five hundred. Um, I don't know if he's, uh, I hope he's healthy. He was out. What was he out? He was out for a while. Last Never year. been healthy, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, he didn't play at all last year. I mean, yeah. he, was, he was just first game November 6th, whatever, then then out. Um, yeah. so uh, he's always got that, that un, unrealized potential that he's shown flashes, you know, he's mm-hmm. had a, bit, a good run in the playoffs a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I mean, he's always, he's always kind of on my list of guys to lose money on. You know, so I might 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 try to do a little bit of that, but I think today it's probably for me it's probably just just Jokic from this game. I think I don't really see much else. Much else. 
Yeah, I, I agree that Jokic is a tr- is a great play at 10-3. Uh, it's just factoring that everybody else is probably a good play too. The thing I'm having a little hard time getting my hands around is the projection on ownership, the projection on fantasy points and everything. Why is Larry Markkinen so much higher than Colin Sexton? Um, you know, that's the other guy I was going to ask you about was Colin Sexton, actually. Yeah, I, I actually took him in our in my fantasy draft this year because – Hey, you want to lose games and, and get a guy who's going to put up a bunch of shots for you. Colin Sexton fits that that mold perfectly. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Jordan Clarkson and him on the court together. Um, but as of right now, I really, I, I really just like Jokic from this game. Um, Marketing and Sexton are both on my list. I have it as one of the two of them, but I actually think they're both really good plays. And it's this interesting game because. It's they're they're only seven point underdogs to a team that's supposed to be a can you know could potentially win the West, and it just feels weird. Even though it's a home game, like it just feels like they should be like like twelve thirteen point underdogs every night minimum. Um, but I, I do like I do like Sexton and uh, and Markkinen for what it's worth. And it's funny we didn't even go over those Cleveland guys when we talked about them, like Donovan Mitchell and Karis LeVert and and. Um... And Darius Garland. Yeah, the, I just think they're going to be completely fantasy irrelevant outside of Garland and and Mobley at these prices. Okay. Um, I mean, to play, to play Mitchell at like nine K is just I don't know or whatever he is eighty something hundred. I don't. I couldn't do it. You can get Levert off the bench at fifty three hundred. Is that worth playing? I don't, I don't think Levert is even like. I think they're going to. I think they're trying to desperate. But I, I I drafted Levert in my in my league season long fantasy draft because I I'm almost certain they end up trading him. He's okay. An absolutely detrimental player for a really good team. So I he's really really good on really bad teams. Um, I think he's going to be a great fantasy producer later in the season. But I I don't see how he even gets. I mean, how are the minutes even like he's he's not even going to get the minutes there. I I don't you know. Does he play like even more than 18 minutes? Maybe, but I, I can't guarantee that um, with the rest of the guys they have there. So that, that's my issue with him, I guess. Um, okay. It's a tough slate, man. <laughs> well, Dallas Phoenix, we have a possible preview of something. Um, I don't know what, what that's going to be. It could, could be a play-in game. Could be a play-in game. Could be <laughs> could be the champion. Could be the, the conference championship or anything in the middle. I mean, who knows? Um so I'm glad that I ran other things, uh, other projections. I, I ran some right earlier and then like a little later um, because my original builds, I was getting just like to an inordinate amount of Maxi Kleber, like I always do, but um, but, but not anymore. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think I'm going to start with, <laughs> with, with, with Luca. Um, and I have him, I just, it's just a question of, do you want to play? I'm looking. He's a really strong play, right? Uh, as far as like raw points, it's him and it's him and Jokic, right? Um, yep. So, listen, we didn't really talk about Durant or anything like that. I'm just like now looking at just guys that can put up fantasy points, you know. But yeah. for me, it's 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 Jokic and 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 Luca, and you know, step one is can you play two of the two of them together or not? You know, um, I, I presume that with with what's going on in San Antonio, you probably could. Um, I think it's a way big slate to try to do that, though. I just think that somebody, some of these middle guys like Halliburton, I think it's better to get like the Halliburton and Cade, right, than, right. than five 3K guys, you know what I mean? Just so they, right. Or even three 5K guys, you know, that, that you can right. get in with, with those guys. So, um, I think those 7K guys are really, really strong today. So um, I agree with you. Um, so I don't think you play them together. But in any case, I, I definitely think you could play you could play Luca on, on lineups where you're not playing Jokic. That certainly makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and as far as Phoenix, I don't know. Uh, not much, honestly. Um, so for me, it, it look, looks like it's just going to be, uh, what should we call it? Like Luca or not much. So that's pretty much where I am in this one, too. Um, you know, this. <laughs> I wouldn't bring into revenge games like in day one usually, but the way that they got beaten down on their home court by Dallas in in the you know last year to to knock them out of the playoffs, I really feel like this is a game where Phoenix will take it somewhat personally. Also, with all the ownership stuff in the off season and them selling the team and all that right now, I, I do think they come to play. I don't really know what that means, right. um, but. For fantasy, it's kind of hard to prioritize any of these guys at these prices, except for maybe DeAndre Ayton. I think is as re- another sixty two hundred center who is who is very viable. Um, I think that I like Bam better, 
but I think that I think that Aiton is completely viable if you wanted to go that route. And I, and I like Luca, like you, just a little tiny bit less than Jokic. But I think this is a, I want to point out this year. I think we might be changing our tune later on that. Um, I think that I think we might see that the best fantasy producer this year is is Luca. And I think this is probably where Luca wins his first MVP and probably not his last. Oh, he um, hadn't won the MVP yet, huh? No, no, he's not even really been. That and speaking that speaking of MVPs, you know, so I guess the only team it seems like the only team not playing is Giannis tonight, right? I, it's, I'm yeah. sure there are others. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. We just don't uh, have the best player. All right, so Portland, Sacramento. Um, I actually have a, something in this game. I have, you know, we talked about about centers. And we talked about, oh, there's a lot of good plays, but you know, that means that there are some good plays, right? And and one of them is um is Demontis Sabonis um at eighty one hundred. Mm-hmm. Have him uh looking looking pretty strong. I don't really have too much else. I'm just looking, Sacramento, Portland. I mean, down my value list, I mean the closest thing I come to is the is the center, is 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 Nurkic. Um, and he's like my like ninth favorite center, I guess. So I don't know. Uh I like to play these late games in general, but not seem to be getting too much. The other guy I have, and this is a guy that I just hate playing on, even on small slates. I can't imagine playing on a big one, but Trey Lyles, I don't know, 3,300. I mean, I'm just kind of like grasping here, but those are the only guys I have really for this game. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't know who's playing yet for these guys, so it's going to be hard to, to you know – figure this one out is it are we sure that they're that they announced that keegan murray is out um who's that he's there he's the uh the rookie probably one of the favorites to win rookie of the year oh oh yeah he says out yeah so he's if he's out officially i, I think that you could you could argue for maybe a little bit of trey lyles i think that's that's not the worst idea in the world because it's a later game and if they switch maybe you can adjust some things they, they they're pretty like I, I, Sacramento is much better than they were last year, in my opinion. And I think that you're going to see them make a little bit of a push this year. Um, I think for me, fantasy wise in this one, I, I do like Sabonis. And I like I, I actually think that Fox is not unreasonable uh, to take a shot on here. But he does. I wouldn't play those two guys together. But I do think one of them is 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 going to have a big game tonight. And it's a really good matchup for both. Um uh Sabonis can do a lot of things you know I just I I, I like I the pace that Portland plays with I want to get some some exposure here but having a hard time getting to anything on the Portland side uh Lillard's just a little too close in price to Jokic and Luka for me to to take interest in um and it's just not quite the right time for Josh Hart at 5200 um I I, I I'm sort of off the Portland side but I do like the Sabonis and and I'm open to to the thing with Lyles I just why do they need to play a power forward when you can use Harrison Barnes as your power forward? So maybe Lyles starts and plays 25 minutes and maybe Lyles doesn't play one minute and doesn't even come off the bench. I mean, I have a qu- both I are have, pop- yeah, Okay. Sorry. I, I have a question for you. Um, going back to some of this other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Who is, who is Jeremy Sochan? So he was the other, the other, uh, Sohan was the other rookie um, for the, for the Spurs. And yeah, that's I don't the know. only reason I bring him up is is that he he's the one that's not doesn't look like cheap. You know what I mean? Like he he looks he's fifty three hundred and nobody knows who he is. Not that nobody knows who he is, right? So mm-hmm. he's fifty three hundred. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what they're you know again. I don't know what their plan is or whatever. But maybe maybe he'll be lower owned because mm-hmm. he's fifty three hundred. And it's and look, it's tough to project these guys. I mean, it really is. Um, I'm just trying to think, you know, listen, how many times have, 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 you know, we were so sure what Popovich was going to do and then like just just does something else. I, I, I do think that because this is the home opener and, you know, because they're playing a team they can beat, you know, it's in, in theory, at least. Um, mm-hmm. Charlotte, like you said, is like pretty weak and they have no LaMelo. I think he's going to put out his best team. You know what I mean? I think he's going to try to win this game. Um, so I don't know what that what that means. I think you just watch for starting lineups and. I just watch the starting lines and play the starters. I guess I I don't know. I get seems seems pretty pedestrian, but I I think he might give starters starters minutes for some reason. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I I mean I think they're under pretty strict orders to try to lose. Um, <laughs> no, I really do. I mean I, I think the Spurs, Hornets, and and Jazz. We know we know what their motivation is. In my opinion, 
I don't think that this, I, I'm totally shocked that Popovich stayed with the team. Um, I have no idea why he's still coaching unless he, you know, they really are going to tank hard enough to get Wembenyama and he wants to get that guy in there. Um, I, I really, I mean, they traded DeJounte Murray so they could do this. They traded Derek, they tried, they, they literally had a young enough team to bu start building something and they got rid of all of it just so they could lose. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I feel very speculative and they have like 17 active body. I mean, they have more bodies than you're allowed to have that all could get minutes. So it just feels like, that's why it just feels like very speculative value. And we've seen it with the Spurs before, but this is a different type of Spurs team. So I, I don't know what to expect, man. Like it is opening night at home. Um, it still is Popovich. Like how do you adjust as a guy who's never been a part of a rebuild of any kind to just becoming a rebuild coach? I, I don't know. I, I really don't know what the, what the end game is here. If they had like a superstar who was hurt, uh, it, it, and it's going to be interesting to see because this Sohan, Trey Jones, I don't think there's any lock that these guys start. I do think uh, Vassal, Keldon Johnson, and Podal are virtual locks to start. Um, everybody else, I feel like, is very up in the air for me. Um, and I think that, you know, Podal at least will be playing somewhere else in probably a couple months. See, I, 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 I was, I was wrong about what, what, what I would say we're wrong with Popovich's whole like, like plan was, I mean, I, I, I really thought that, you know, given his politics as well, I, I, I really thought that they were going to be grooming uh, Becky Hammond to be that first female head coach. I really thought that's what they were going to do. And I, I you know, they, she signed, she signed with, uh, with Las Vegas, you know, to, you know, listen, you know, she, she saw the, you know, she saw it wasn't, I guess it wasn't going to happen for her or whatever. She's going to make a million a year over, over that, over there. So I guess that's, you know, that, that's good for the WNBA or you know, whatever it is. That, that's what I was th thinking of, of is that I don't know what, what contract she has over there, but maybe a two year contract over there, Spurs tank, bring the number one draft pick in and bring Becky Hammond back as head, as, as head coach. I'm, I'm down for that. Um, but why would they then have, her not start now with the real. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. That's my, that's the problem. Yeah, <laughs> so, and, and and the other thing is, don't forget, is that the WNBA is is literally part of the NBA. You know, what's good for the WNBA is good for the NBA. So so I mean, they literally their office is in the same building. You know, mm -hmm. um. So uh, I guess this is I guess this was the what, what what they wanted to do with her. But um, yeah, I don't I don't know. I, I don't think that. They're going to tank. What are they, so, so you think Popovich is going to hang around like another year? I mean, if they get the top draft picks to see what happens. I'm surprised he's hanging around now. So I don't know what exactly he's hanging yeah. around for. I felt I actually had the exact same thoughts as you. I would have, if you asked me last year, I would have actually said like, I'm 80% sure that's what they're doing. But yeah, I, I just, you know, and obviously I was wrong, yeah. um, but I, it, it's going to be interesting. And I just, again, we have the first night of, of the season and we're going to, we're going to be debating over Spurs value and then they come out and they play 12 guys and nobody more than like 24 minutes. <laughs> Not only that, but this is, then this is what you have to think about everybody. I mean, like right now we're, we're, we're pondering Spurs value and listen, it doesn't, it doesn't look, seem like this is going to be the case. You can't imagine this being the case right now, but, but between now and six o'clock, the slate is going to be completely different. You know, like the, there are going to be three guys that are, just by the math of it, it'll be three guys that are going to look like equal value to the Spurs. Maybe not exactly, but as as Bobby likes to say, like so we're 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 waiting on this, we're waiting on this, and we're waiting on stuff that we don't know what we're waiting on yet. You know what I mean? Right. Like there's just going to be stuff that we are not contemplating that happens, and how you react to that is pretty important. Like like remember, like right now the San Antonio value looks really good. So let's say say somebody else comes out of equal value. Sometimes that guy, whoever that is, gets a lot of steam and the Spurs value all of a sudden is like, you know, no one's playing them anymore. Yeah. Sometimes um, somebody shows up as, you know, as, as a good value and people say, oh, my God, I finally found my pivot to the Spurs. You know what I mean? They, they pound them. Sometimes they ignore them. So it, it's kind of hard because because, as I mentioned in, in you know yesterday's video, ownership projections just don't update if the news comes out late. So you yep. just have to you have to guess really like how how, how people are going to react to it. But one yep. thing to do if, if 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 it helps is when when new news comes out and if you could get your projections updated in time, just run like 150 optimals with Saber Sim or Brutal or whatever, and just see who's the most you know most used guy in that in that in that crunch, and they'll probably end up being like really popular. 
That's just yeah. that's what people do. I mean, as I've been guilty of that too. If I'm sitting here with my lineups and then 15 minutes to post, somebody comes out in the seven o'clock game that's going to be whatever. I literally scramble, reshuffle, rebuild, and enter. You know what I mean? Yeah. So 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 if you have time to do that to at least know who's going to be popular. You know, then then you could actually, you know, uh, uh, intelligently fade that, you know, whatever. And this and so many other reasons is why we talked about this yesterday, why the NBA is is just so hard and for the same reasons. So awesome. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is uh, we're off to we're, we're going to be we're going to be off to the races today for sure. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to real quick go through some of my um, my just the plays that, that, that stand out to me as being my favorites. Halliburton, uh, Scotty Barnes, Cade Cunningham, Bam, one of at least Jalen Green, KP, uh, Ke- Kevin Porter Jr. or Shengun, at least one of Vassell, Trey Jones, Keldon Johnson or Podol probably. Maybe you could throw Sohan into the mix. Um, I like the Sexton or Markkinen idea, and I think Sabonis or Fox with Jokic and Luka being the spend ups. So I actually only have like twelve names circled, which is pretty good. I thought I was going to end up with like 90, um, 12 is 12 makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> um, right. but yeah, so that's, that, that's where I'm at today. And, uh, and we'll see, we'll see you guys at, at six, right? Yep. Sounds good. All right. Good luck. Good luck today, everybody. And, uh, let's get the season started off. Right. I hope, hopefully we had some people make some money last night. Let's hopefully we can do it again. All right, uh, hang on after you stop recording. All right. Good luck, everybody.